Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another lore video. Today's topic will be the ruling body of the Skaven race itself. I'm of course talking about the Council of Thirteen. So without further ado, let's begin. The Council of Thirteen is the ruling body of the Skaven Under Empire, which attempts to rule over the whole Skaven race. The Council consists of 12 Skaven Lords, known as the Lords of Decay, and the Horned Rat himself. The Lords of Decay oversee all matters pertaining to the entire species of the Skaven race, from hatching terrible plots to initiating an invasion against the enemies of their kind. And it is considered the right and sovereign duty of the Council of Thirteen to unite all greater and lesser clans under one banner. And whilst the Council of Thirteen does hold sway over the whole of the Skaven under Empire, a united Skaven race has yet to be realized. And in truth, the Great Skaven Plan of the Great Ascendancy is yet to be realized because the Skaven clans often bicker and in some cases war against each other, which is much to the benefit of any other race in the Warhammer world. The Council of Thirteen meets within the capital city of Skavenblight, where they sit at a long horseshoe table made of pure warpstone and engraved with one of many of the Horned Rat's commandments. There they sit in a fashion which highlights their rank within the Council. The Horned Rat himself holds the 13th position, and to his immediate right and left are positions 1 and 12, which are considered the most important positions within the Council. The remaining pairs come as following. 2 and 11, 3 and 10, 4 and 9, 5 and 8, and finally 6 and 7, which are the furthest away from the Horned Rat and thus are considered the least important members of the Council of Thirteen. It is important to note that the Horned Rat himself is only a member of the Council figuratively, as he does not physically represent himself within the Council. The Council itself meets either in whole or in part at least once a month, and sometimes they have been known to meet on a weekly basis. Here, the Council discuss battle plans, political dilemmas, and important issues that face their race, and must vote on what course of action needs to be taken. Each member of the Council can vote in favour, against, or abstain from the current issue. Now, as you can imagine, even the members of the Council of Thirteen can bicker amongst themselves, and it has been known that certain members of the Council will vote against or even abstain just to be able to sabotage the plans of another. Now, as the Horned Rat himself does not get directly involved with his meetings, his vote is considered to be used as a tiebreaker. With his vote typically being interpreted by one of the Grey Seers, and often the Seer Lord himself, who is a member of the Council. This effectively gives the Grey Seers an extra vote as they hold the first seat which obviously shifts the balance of political power to the Graciers more often than not. However, when the situation is most dire is when the Horned Rat will personally intervene in the decision making, and the Council will ever unite under a single cause. For all Skaven, even the Lords of Decay themselves, fear the Great Horned Rat. It is important to note that while the Council has the ultimate goal of creating the Great Ascendancy, the Council does bicker as stated before, and often this does lead to manipulations, bribes, rivalries, backroom deals, shady agreements, favoritism, and conspiracies within the Council. With Skaven politics being the most volatile of the Warhammer world at best, each position within the Council is open to new potential candidates or replacements at any given time. In order to become a candidate, the applicant must first place his hands upon the Pillars of Commandments. If the applicant does not die after touching the Pillars of Commandments, he is then seen as a worthy candidate to potentially become a Lord of Decay. The candidate must simply then challenge a member of the Council to a fight to the death for his position. Should he kill his opponent, he would be welcomed into the Council as its newest member. The second and most common way to become a member of the Council is to destroy the clan that possesses a member of the Council of Thirteen. As by right of conquest, the seat of the vanquished clan belongs to the victor as a spoil of war. 
The candidate himself would not have to duel and kill the council member, for without a power base to solidify his claim, the former council member is often assassinated or removed by other council members by force. However, whether the victor can retain the seat once it has been taken is another matter entirely, as other clans may have been laying in wait for the battle to end and the new victor being severely weakened. And with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our lore video. Thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, and even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. But once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again soon.